Pixels. I hope you're ready. First and foremost, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everyone. And we appreciate all of you that come here each and every single day, 2 to 6 Eastern time, to jump aboard with us. I know you have many options out there. And we so appreciate you coming here. We do. Um, You guys have grown the show every year. It's growing into one of the most watched shows in Philly and around the country. And we can't thank you enough. Really. Right out of the gate, Angelo Cataldi will be with us at 2.30 at the bottom of the hour Eastern time. We'll get Angie on here. Um, It was a telling weekend in the NFL. LJ, I have arrived to eat crow. Take your best shots. LJ, happy new year. Um, That game on Sunday for the Philadelphia Eagles is a microcosm of the entire season. And here's why. The score of that game was not indicative of the ass pounding that you took in that game on Sunday. They completely dominated you. Physically, mentally, everything. Spiritually, your effort, coaching, organizationally. They knew when they were down 15, they had you. There was nothing you could do in that game that was going to slow that momentum down. Hey, by the way, did the Cardinals punt? Did they punt in that game? I don't remember the Cardinals punting. Did they punt? I mean, did I did, did, did I appreciate it? Thank you so much. A three-win football team didn't punt in a team that is in a stretch run to try to get home field advantage. You got your asses kicked. Breaking it down. That's going to be the most embarrassing part of this. And here's why it's a microcosm of your season. That scoreboard didn't really show how bad you got killed. And your record is really not who you are. It's totally a microcosm of everything that's happened this year. You're not that good. Hey, and by the way, if I'm the Arizona Cardinals, I come out of that going, Jonathan Gannon coached the doorknobs off of Nick Sirianni. He's beaten Dallas this year, hung with San Francisco, and beat the Eagles. His three teams that he's going to have to contend with in the future, with all those draft picks, I got my coach. All that shit we were talking about getting off the bus and on the bus. I do believe he's turning that thing or Kyler Murray was sensational. He was sensational. The Eagles had no answers for him. He did whatever he wanted to at will. He had garbage pale guys. Their top receiver wasn't active. James Connor, okay back annihilated you. Hey, and this just in, Jordan Davis, where the fuck are you? You're in your second year, son. No excuses. You can't play good for seven games and take the other 10 off. Where are you? Where are you? By the way, The Cardinals are terrible. They're a terrible team. I got you, Mr. Snuffy. Even with that shitty defense, you still line up across the board better than them. Hey, if I hear another host in radio, TV, anywhere say the coaches didn't have them ready to play, 
You motherfuckers. You get paychecks. This is not college football. This is not college football. You get paid millions of dollars. Millions. Millions. Coaching? How about self-accountability? How about self-respect? The coaches. I mean, stop with the firing of Sirianni because it wouldn't matter. They put another puppet in there. This doesn't go to Howie Roseman. This goes to the owner of the Philadelphia Eagles. He has no fail-safes for accountability in his organization. None. Howie's not accountable to anybody but Laurie. And he thinks he's a football guy, which is scary. This goes to the owner. What a complete and utter disaster. It's one thing to lose to playoff contending teams. It's another thing to lose to shitty football teams. That's a shitty football team. And they destroyed you. They absolutely, utterly destroyed you. It wouldn't matter if you fire. Hey, the thing has completely unraveled because the owner allowed it to unravel. They said we have one of the best owners. He is a good owner, but this is why he's underachieved. In 30 years, with the talent and the coaching talent that you've had, you should have four Super Bowls. He's not the owner. The owner in Baltimore is. He's not. That owner lets his football people. That's why, get this. You want to know why Baltimore is the best run franchise in the last 30 years outside of what New England did? You want to know why Ozzie Newsom, Eric DaCosta, and the owner of the Baltimore Ravens? Oh, by the way, they're the number one seed in the AFC. You know why? You can't go wrong hiring a Harbaugh. You know, there's a chance that the Harbaugh's could win the college football national title and Super Bowl in the same calendar year. Hiring great authority coaches who hold people accountable is how you win Super Bowls. That's what Doug did. I mean, the Eagles gave a half-ass effort. I really don't think the offense was horrible. You just didn't have enough opportunities. Gannon went for an onside kick, knowing full well if you scored, he was going to hold you to a field goal. That was the game. You played right into his trap. His objective was to hold you to a field goal. Get the football. Score a touchdown. Beat you on. I said this. As soon as that onside kick, I go, I think they duped him. I think they duped him. Because there wasn't a lot of time left on the clock. He didn't want, he wanted the clock. He didn't care about the field position. He knew the play calling would get tight. It did. He had the advantage, like I said on Friday. He knew what they would do. 
He knew what Nick would think. He knew it. Gannon was playing chess. Sirianni was playing checkers. He duped them into that. Once they didn't score a touchdown and they kicked the field goal, Gannon knew he was going to win. I said this, holy shit, the Cardinals are going to win. I believe the Cardinals were going to win. As soon as they made the field goal, I went, the Cardinals are going to win this thing. And they did. Brilliant strategy. Hold them to the field goal. You hadn't stopped us. We hadn't punted all day. You weren't going to stop Kyler Murray. And you didn't. Let me give you my takeaways now. That's just the start of this thing. How far is like um, Harrisburg to uh, Philly? It's like an hour and a half, right? That's where Three Mile Island is. Guys like Tone are too young for that. But remember, guys, Three Mile Island? It's like in Harrisburg, right? That's when they had those nuclear reactors have a situation, Three Mile Island. You know, right? Atomic waste. Yeah, right? That's what you have here. You have a three-mile island nuclear meltdown here. I see the core. Like I said, the score didn't, it doesn't give it justice how bad they killed you. I blame the owner for all of this, for allowing this to disintegrate. Right in front of your eyes. By the way, I've got to back up on something. Jonathan Gannon and Shane Steichen were the two best coaches. Nick is the lesser coach. He's a yes man. Those two guys are actually good coaches. Jonathan Gannon, I apologize. You may be a shady dude, but you're superior. He completely outcoached Sirianni. He made him look stupid. But then again, Sirianni's look like a dumbass all year. I mean, the defensive personnel, we've gone over this. I don't care if Jim Johnson's your coordinator. You're not fixing this. By the way, stop with the firing of the coaches. It won't matter because why? What's the number one thing I tell you that organization wants? Control. They don't want Lombardi trophies. They'd rather have the control. That's what happens. If you're going to have control of something, let your coach have it, not your GM. How many places does that dynamic work where the GM is in complete control of an organization and they win Super Bowls? Can you name me one place? Where? Name me one place that you went from the front office. Where? You went from the sidelines. I mean, Nick Sirianni was so out of place on the sidelines. I mean, we're going to hear apologies all week. And, and, and get this, the only thing that he does have and the only thing he can say is that we've got to stick together. How do you stick together when two weeks ago you were absolutely lying to your team and everybody in your locker room about Sean Desai? It's, and by the way, I'm wrong about AJ. He's not T.O. Brown. He doesn't want to talk shit on the organization. I believe that. He goes, it's not you guys. He's telling you without telling you. It's them. How he's like a weed. He, dude, 
that just keeps coming back. Kyler Murray was absolutely sensational. Completely outplayed Jalen Hurts, who didn't play bad. Look at what that defense did and made Kyler Murray look like a $46.1 million a year quarterback. He looked every bit of it. Shit, if I'm the Cardinals, I'm not moving off that. I don't think so. I mean, he completely, with one game, changed his entire trajectory of what you're going to do as an or You're not moving off that. I am not moving off that. Matt Patricia is doesn't know his personnel. It, he he doesn't know the personnel. I mean, the positions. Why are you playing man? You don't have man corners. Holy shit, that thing was honestly, it was so. It didn't make sense. Nothing they did on defense made sense. It just didn't make sense. Reddick dropping in coverage. It, it The whole thing was chaos. Has Sirianni lost the locker room? He never had it. What do you mean is Sirianni lost the locker room? They like Nick Sirianni because Nick Sirianni is like one of them. I don't want my head coach to be player friendly. I want my head coach to be Mike Tomlin. You think Mike Tomlin is player friendly? Or you don't think he gives a shit about winning? A player's coach? You think Mike Tomlin's a player's coach? I don't. I think Mike Tomlin is a winning coach. Player coach? That's like saying, Code, he's my buddy. So you got a buddy OC and you got a buddy head coach. How's that working? That's a great point, Richie. What do you think the Eagle coaches would do with Mason Rudolph as their starting quarterback? You think they'd be 2-0? You've lost four of five. Hey, by the way, all you gauntlet guys, the gauntlet broke you. Think about that. We're the gauntlet. It broke you. Spiritually, physically, Mentally, the gauntlet broke you. You're broken. Your will's broken. You can't fix that. Your will is broken. When you lose to a three-win team, okay, in a stretch run, where the NFC East is still on the line and potentially the number one overall seed and you get out-willed, out-coached, out-efforted. What else is there to say? You quit. This is not fixable. It's one thing to get beat by the Cowboys. Or the Niners. It's another thing to lose to the Jets and the Cardinals. Terrible. I mean, Hertz was fine. He just didn't have opportunity. We're going to look at the numbers here. By the way, Angelo Cataldi, I can't wait. Angelo predicted this. 
Angelo predicted this. Be with us at the bottom of the hour. The 35-31 score did not really show us what happened in this game. You were thoroughly beaten by a team that's lesser than you and absolutely took you apart. There wasn't one redeeming quality about your entire football team. Not one. 32 first downs to 17. They almost doubled you. Who in the world were they throwing the ball to? 450 yards of total offense versus 275. You were dominated both defensive line and your so-called great O-line. Your O-line this year has been spotty at best, and you put all your money in that group. It's the biggest expense on your team. There's five of them. You got two guys at 15, right? You got a center at 15. You got to decide what you're going to do with Landy. You're going to give, he's going to command 20 million. Jalen left 40 TDs and four Ks in a down year. (laughs) Jalen Hurts as a passer has been suspect. Suspect. I can name you 10 guys with better years. With that talent, too. What w- Kyler Murray was twice the player Hertz was in that game. With no bodies. You have A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. And by the way, 30-19, I'm putting one of my star players in a position to block for Kenny Gainwell? Protect your players. Get Olame in there. He's he's great at blocking. What the frig was that? Now he's in a walking boot. Congratulations. Dumb. Rushing yards, 221 yards versus that defensive line who's been awful. 91 rushing. On 23 attempts, they had 40. They ran the ball at 5-5 a clip. Every, get this, every two carries, they got a first down against you. They were constantly in third and short. Shit, they were barely in third down. Time and possession, 40 minutes to 20. Murray, 25 of 31, 232. Three touchdowns, 116, and ate the living shit out of your defense. This thing has been a colossal, like I said, Harrisburg, you know, years ago, Three Mile Island had that meltdown, right? This is an institutional meltdown. This starts at the very top. This has nothing to do with that choir boy or that cheerleader on the sideline. This has everything to do with the owner, because you know why? He does not hold anybody accountable but the guy who owns his checkbook. That You could have Jim Johnson in there, and it wouldn't matter. No, he couldn't because Jim would never take the job. The shittiest team in the league beat you and beat you up. Let me say something to you here, man. Angelo Cataldi, he thought they would lose. They may lose this Giants game now because you have no will, you have no heart, you, you were in a stretch run, and you got blasted by a team that stinks. 